a huge hello to all my dear fan base sorry guys that i couldn't make it so long but yeah i had taken a good break and now i'm back with the bang so now we are going to start into a new topic and i'm sure you guys will truly love it so today we're going to start with bio statistics so well many of you will be like what bio statistics like why why should i study bio statistics i'm a biologist but trust me guys knowingly or unknowingly we all biologists are using statistical tools for all our experiments right from the start so what is bio statistics bio statistics the word represents the development and application of statistical methods to a range of biological um, topics so let us get into this step by step so first step in any experiment is sample collection so in bio statistics we call it sampling so we will see what is sampling and before that we will see what is a sample so a sample is a small section of the population which represents the whole population so for example now we are taking a class of say 50 students out of those 50 students we will not make everyone the representative only two of them will be representing the whole class they represent the whole population that is the whole class so the first step is to collect the samples and there are a wide range of methods by which we can do this and sampling is the process of collecting the samples so here i have used the term population so what is this population is the items or elements which are included in the statistical investigation so essential features of samples so samples from the population should be homogeneous and should not have difference when compared with the population so here we are taking an pizza as an example so when you take one piece of the pizza then it should have all the elements which are present in the whole pizza okay it's not like one piece has only chilies other piece has only cheese other piece has uh, only uh, tomatoes or something like that okay so so the whole thing should be evenly spread so that is what is homogeneity so the first thing is the samples should be homogeneous with the population okay yeah so the next thing is more number of items are to be included in the sample so here instead of taking just one piece of pizza if we would take another piece then it would show us a more greater reliability of the results okay but it does not mean like if you have uh, 50 people in the population you take about 40 people as a sample no that is not what you do so depends like you know what study are you doing so based on that you have to choose your sample and uh, since they have said more number of items it's not something like you will take more than uh, 70% or 80% as a sample then it's not a sample then it's like close to the whole population okay so again coming back uh, the selected samples which uh, we have that should have the same characteristic as the original population for example this particular pizza piece that we have chosen here this pizza should have a cheese a layer and it should have some tomatoes it should have the mushroom it should have the chilies all of it which is present in the sample should be present in the population and vice versa whatever is present in the population should be there in the sample and whatever is there in the sample should be there in the population only then this sample can represent this population okay so or as we will not say that the sample is representing the population okay so the final point is that the individual items composing the sample should be independent of each other this is a very important thing so it should be independent of each other what we mean by this is that the individual items say the tomatoes the mushrooms and uh, the chilies or say even the cheese so each one has its own taste and it is independent of the taste of the other thing which is over there so that is the individuality which each ingredient has that is what we mean by telling that each individual should be independent of each other and uh, going further we have the advantages of sampling techniques so what are the major advantages one is it reduces cost we don't have to study the whole a uh, lot of the population so it also reduces time and um, it can be used for infinite population also and 
Another thing is it might give a more accurate result when compared to the whole uh, population. So why this point is given is because when you study say 10,000 people that is the whole population you are going to study in that 10,000 people say some 10-15 people are going to tell you that they are not clear about the topic they are not clear but if you are going to study only 200 people and all those 200 people are very clear with what you are talking about so you will be going with this so they, these are the sample which will give you a more accurate result so moving further we have also certain shortcomings so here the first thing is that it cannot be used for very small populations say there are only 10 people we cannot use sampling at the time we just have 10 people we, we need to ask each and every one of them so it, it cannot be used for small populations and another thing is that if the sample is not drawn properly then the results may be false sometimes it can also be inaccurate and misleading okay which is there may be bias and prejudice while sampling so this happens in case of non-random sampling which we will be seeing in the further slides next is the size of the sample so the first thing is we need a perfectly homogeneous mixture and uh, in case of a small sample but sometimes a large sample might be re uh, required in case of heterogeneous populations we need a large sized sample because we don't know there might be a chance that we skip someone or we skip some part so that is the reason we need a large size sample for heterogeneous population and uh, the larger the size of the population the bigger should be the sample the next is the nature of the study so based on the study the size of the sample will be affected for example my study is only for six months i am going to do the study for six months on the influence of pesticides on plants so i am not going to choose some 15 pesticides and say 10,000 plants in that six months how much i can do only that much i'll be choosing so that is also affecting the size of the sample the nature of the study the duration of the study all of those things next is the person the person who is collecting the sample so here all the bias and prejudice comes into play so next there is one ideology which people say that if the sample size is large the results will be accurate but it's not true sometimes experts can take a small size sample which will give you a better result okay the size of the sample is also influenced by the sampling technique which we will be seeing very shortly so yes the methods of sampling methods of sampling are of two types one is the random sampling and the other one is the non-random sampling this we will be seeing in our next video thanks a lot for watching guys don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon next to it to be the first one to get the concepts right and also, if you like the video, please hit the like button and turn it grey. Thank you.